So you see, and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about things you can do to avoid becoming bored with magic. I'm mainly talking about EDH, I want to say, um, just because I think some of these can be applicable towards EDH mostly, um, versus competitive formats, but I think these are like fair things to, you know, help you avoid becoming bored with magic because it's definitely a thing that has happened. It's definitely happened to me before and I've done some of these things in order to help me avoid um, making things stale basically. So let's get into it. The first thing is, um, okay, I read this totally in a different thing and I was like, what does that mean? Uh, is to change cards around. I think one thing that really bothers me is when people think that decks are permanent. They're not. Deck lists are never permanent. Um, it's not like someone's gonna, like, memorize your deck list and be like, um, excuse me, on January 24th you were running, um, four Snapcaster Mages and now you're only running three? Ugh, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, actually, you can do that and you should do that. I'm not saying change four to three Snapcaster Mages. You should probably always run four Snapcaster Mages, but, um, yeah, change some cards around if you're ever, like, stale. Um, I think this is, like, especially pre pre prevalent in a format like EDH because you can just hold up there we go because you can just totally change things around and like see how things work especially in EDH because your deck is like a hundred card 99 cards and you can find a lot of times where like you don't draw some cards so you know or like you draw a card and every game you draw this card and you're like this card's terrible like why is this even in the deck change the cards around also too I think a lot of it is like a combination of cards where some cards work better with other cards duh synergy it's how it works so you may be like, oh, I was running one piece of this combo, and then when I put in the second piece, it just works, like, a million times better. So yeah, nothing's permanent. Change your deck. That seems pretty self-explanatory, right? I think so. Okay, cool. Second thing is, again, I think this is a little bit more relevant to EDH, but listen, it could be in modern if you're playing, like, two colors, add a color in. Um, I know a lot of people, too, will sometimes do, like, four-color decks, which I think is really sweet. I'm um, talking about, like, competitive formats, like, modern, for example. So you're running three colors and you're like, yo, I feel like I really need a splash of white for Gideon or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's like totally fair to like throw in a different color just to see like how it'll work. Or kind of on the opposite end, maybe cut a color. If you find that like you're doing four colors or three colors and you're like, I'm not even, I'm only running like one card and it's not even working, just cut the damn color and then try it that way. I know what I did um, in my Super Friends list is I ran five color Super Friends and then I changed it to four so I could trade out Atraxa. Losing a couple of cards, I lost a couple Sweet Planeswalkers and Complex, but I mean, I did build five color ladies. I didn't really want to have two five color decks, so it was kind of one of my reasons for it. Um, yeah, add, take away a color, you know, and see what that, that does for your, for your deck. Uh, third thing, uh, take a break. This is pretty simple, but I think a lot of people can like forget to do this. Um, I took a break from Modern. I'm still taking a break from Modern. I don't even know if I'm ever going to get back into Modern, actually. I do really enjoy making videos about it, and it's definitely really fun for me to talk about. It's so fun to brew up decks and stuff like that. I think my whole thing is, and I've, I've said this, is that I, I feel like I'm someone where I need to change decks up all the time. And there's some people out there who can play a deck for three years and master it and love it. I get like, I get like anxiety because I'm like, I want to change decks. Like I'm like, I get like a nervous itch and I'm like, I need to change decks up because I just want to do cool things. I don't want to experiment so much. So I think one thing like that to avoid becoming me where I'm like, I hate modern. Oh, it's awful. Is just to like, if you can, it's really, I think, a good thing to have access to a ton of cards. And listen, if you're someone who you build a deck and you love it and you tweak it and it's your baby, listen, that's great for you. And I wish I was you because it would make my life a lot easier and I could actually be playing modern right now um, than, than being in this rut where I'm like, I hate everything because I can't play cool cards, Duh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people like have at, like a binder where they can just switch out cards you know it, it costs a ton of money it really does it's, it's very very expensive especially for someone who wants like foils and things like that it gets very expensive but yeah I mean just to like take a break to be like listen and it could be taking a break that could mean different things for different people it could mean taking a break from the, like a deck it could mean taking a break from a format sometimes just not playing a deck for a while or only bringing a deck out on certain occasions is cool I do that actually um I have like my EDH decks, I actually have them and I, I have decks that I play more than the others and it's not because I don't love all of my EDH decks, it's because there's certain ones that I don't play all the time. Like my angels, my mono white angels, 
we're gonna boast a little bit. I think that deck's really sweet and it's very powerful. And also another major thing I notice when I play against Paul, who's like the main person I play EDH against with, my best friend, like I notice that he loses like basically every single time we play Angels, which some people would be like, let me play that deck all the time. For me, I don't really have fun when I'm playing against someone who like can't really do anything. That's not fun at all for me, which I know sounds weird coming from me because I'm a blue mage and I like to say no to my opponent a lot. I know that sounds weird. Let me rephrase. I'm a blue mage in modern. In EDH, not so much. I like to play big stompy things and smacky a lot. It's very, very different things that I like to do in completely different formats. Ooh, another point. Maybe change your deck style. Maybe your deck style is not working for you. Like I said, I think knowing what kind of deck player you are, uh, what kind of player you are, I know there's all like these fancy names like I'm a Johnny or I'm a Spike or whatever. I don't even know what all those mean. I just don't really pay attention to most a lot of things in the magic community. But um, I know a lot of people like say all those sort of things and maybe you just need to change your deck up. Like I did this actually. I used to be someone who was very aggressive in my modern decks. Like if you notice like my modern deck history, I played black white tokens and then I played bloom titan and then I played elves and then I played grixis control. And then I started building blue light control but I didn't really play blue light control. I played it for like a little bit. Um, but I never like fully built the deck and, and got all the pieces. So if you notice like a trend, I started out with like really big stompy decks like Black White Tokens was sweet. And then I played Bloom Titan, which was really stompy and combo based. And then I went into Elves, which was very aggressive, hardly any removal. And I found that my power was so limited, I felt like, in my Elf build. That's why I wanted to build something that actually had answers, because Elves and Bloom Titan had like nothing. Black White Tokens actually had a fair amount of removal. I just found that it was a very fair deck, and I was in an environment where fair decks were like not good, which sucked because that deck was sweet. I really enjoyed it. Which makes me think I should totally brew up like an Esper tokens list. Let me know if you guys would like that because I'm a huge fan of tokens and I've done Esper midrange or Esper control, one of those, and I, I really enjoyed that video. It was really fun to make. So um, yeah, see what kind of your play style is. So I learned that I don't like playing aggressive decks in a competitive environment. I don't, I, for myself personally, I didn't think that it was the best of what I could be doing. I found that I was into midrange decks. Like black white tokens could kind of stall out the board. Elves wanted to win on like turn 4, but if you got to like turn 16 you were probably dead. Bloom Titan wanted to kill you on turn 2, ideally. Um, late game was kind of meh, so I kind of found I wanted the game to go out longer so I could do more things. I felt more comfortable. So I think knowing who you are can really help you become bored and make you want to like rage quit because I kind of rage quit modern because I was so upset. I was like nothing I do is working. And it actually happened too. And another thing, I didn't write this on my list, but one of the best magic advice that I've ever gotten, and if you've watched my videos before, I've mentioned this a couple of times, is that certain decks are bad at certain times. And this is such a really, it's a really difficult thing to understand. It sounds super simple, but if you're someone like me who's like in denial when you're like, but the deck was good yesterday, why isn't it good today? Or why isn't this deck good at this deck? And you know, it's, it's this whole mess, like this whole spider web of like connections of things. Like this deck is bad at the, against this deck and this deck is really bad right now because it runs this car, these cards and these cards are kind of better. And it's just a lot. <laughs> it's just a lot of, of stuff basically. So I keep looking down even though like this isn't gonna help me because I wrote like five words like on this page and this list is really not very helpful um, for me, but um, <laughs> But yeah, so I don't know where I was going with that point, but yeah, we're gonna leave it up there because I don't remember what I was saying. Cool. Recurring theme in my videos. I lose track of what I was saying. Um, okay, yeah, actually, so yeah, we're leaving it up, but I don't remember. Okay, another thing, maybe you should like build another deck, which not everyone has, has, has access to. Some people like take their deck and like use the cards to get other cards, which I know a lot of people do. Which if you're someone who puts everything into a deck, you know, $500 into a deck, that's that's your magic budget, that's what you have, you know, um, whatever. Maybe just building a different deck is like the answer because it can help you add like variety so you can change your decks up so that you're not bored. And again, you don't know, rage quit. So like um, one of my friends, Justin, first started with Affinity. And then I don't know why, but he decided to build Delver. I have very strong feelings about Delver. We're not going to get into them in this video. We're just not going there. I have feelings. Let's just let's just say that. Should have built Grixis Control. Just saying, not Delver. It's by far the superior deck. That's it. Shove it on the rug. That's all I'm saying. So he built those two decks, which are very very different kind of decks, and I think it really helped him. I mean, he loves Affinity. Like he loves both of those decks are like his 
babies and he's like he loves those things but I think for him it just added a nice variety you know if you have access if you have the means to do that building another deck can like really help you out because you're like I get so freaking tired like there's some some cards that like we all just don't get tired of casting like I never get tired of casting snapcaster mage I could just snap cast that card all day every day and it's just sweet and I would be like yo I don't get tired of casting this card primeval titan was another card I never got tired of casting I was like this is sweet then there's cards that you're like meh you know if I don't cast this card in five years Seems okay. I could I could go five years without casting this card. I couldn't think of a proper example, you know. So there's some cards that you're kind of like, eh, I could go without that, you know. Eh, it's whatever. Um, yeah, if you have the means to do that, totally build another deck. It would definitely help break up so you have a variety of things. Maybe you're someone who's trying to figure out, like, do you like control? Do you like, um, do you like aggro? Like, do you like combo? Like, what do you like to do? Maybe you could build one deck of each and see what, you know, who you are and who you like and what kind of things, cards do you like casting and what cards you're like, I could cast this card every single day. Ooh, that's like really good advice, actually. I just came up with this on the spot. What cards can you just cast every time and you're like, this is a sensational feeling? I just can't get over, like, Culligan's Command was like, is a card like that. I could cast that card all day, every day and be like, yo, this is sweet. So, yeah, what cards are like that for you, you know? If if you have strong feelings towards those cards, or certain colors, like I said, I really like blue cards, so if I'm like, yeah, I want to cast these cards, yeah, okay, cool, keep keep those, you know, in the back of your head. Um, And then kind of the last thing, which we're ending this on kind of a sour note, is maybe you should take the deck apart, which I wouldn't resort to that immediately. Don't be like me and get really mad and rip decks apart with your bare hands with your whole cans be like oh this sucks because goodness knows we've all done that um and if you haven't you probably will soon because you'll be really frustrated with the deck frustrated with yourself feeling like damn this deck sucks well okay here's the thing is okay maybe the deck does suck maybe you're not running like enough snapcaster mages it's true which if you're not running for what are you doing um but yeah maybe like sometimes the right answer is to take the deck apart sometimes you need to do the other things that I told you about. But sometimes those things just don't work. You try them or you don't want to try them because the deck just isn't for you. And I think that's fine. I think it's like one of those things where this is like a philosophy of, of kind of my life is if you're hesitant about something, the answer is probably no. I give this advice a lot to people who are like in romantic situations and they're like, I don't really know. I was like, okay, if you if you're hesitant about your partner, you probably shouldn't be dating them. Real, real talk, real advice from MTG guys. Just jot, jot that down in your notebook right there, because that's one I'd remember. Just saying. So yeah, if you're if you're hesitating, if you're like, I don't know what to do, this deck, uh, what do I do? Maybe it's just time to just throw it under the rug. Maybe you've done your tweaks that you can. Maybe you've just had enough of that deck. Like maybe like that's a thing. Sometimes you can get like your use out of a deck, and you're like. Yeah, I played that deck for a really long time, and I, I can't really say I've had this sort of satisfied feeling, because it seems, okay, maybe this was, wasn't an, a terrible thing to end with. Maybe this was kind of like a cool, like, smooth thing to end with, you know? Um, I've never really had that amazing feeling where I've been like, yeah, I've played this deck for like three years. Maybe it's, maybe it's time for me to just kind of put this aside, but yeah, no, I think sometimes that is the right answer. Sometimes you can't do anything, or not that you can't do anything, just that it's just not meant to be. The deck and you just, it just, it wasn't happening. So, and I think that's fine. I think that's totally fair. So, um, yeah, guys, that is it. That was it for talking about becoming bored with magic and stuff. So, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.